Hi everyone and welcome to PsyQ, this very special election edition. So as you guys may know, a couple of weeks ago we had John Iderola, host of the Young Turks, fly all the way over from LA to New York to hang out with us and do a very special science debate event here at YouTube Studios in New York. Now, why is science debate? Well, the candidates were asked a lot of different questions across the four presidential debates, but not once were they really asked about science. The only time we kind of touched on that topic was when they were asked about energy jobs. Um, they were asked about religion, about, asked about sex scandals, about emails, but nothing about the scientific future of America. So we wanted to show you some of the behind the scenes interviews with the very special guests. This one was with Matthew Chapman, who is the president of Science Debate. Check it out. Hi, we're here with Matthew Chapman, who is president of Science Debate, a wonderful organization doing a lot of work to get science some more press during this election and to encourage our candidates to have a debate about science. So thank you so much for coming, Matthew. Oh, you're very welcome. Happy to be here. Now, as you can see behind us, we're here in the middle of an event to promote Science Debate and to promote science in public life. So I've, we've been asking everyone that's been on our panels and that we've been talking to today, the one question that they, one science question that they would ask their candidate if they could, what question they would ask in the debate. So Matthew, you're probably the guy with the, the most burning questions. What one question would you ask the candidates if you had the opportunity? Well, strangely enough, I wouldn't ask about climate change or innovation or the usual things. Everybody else is asking about that. But I have uh, some friends who have lost children to mental illness. And I would like to ask a question about how much money candidates would be willing to put into research into mental illness and destigmatizing something that is extraordinarily painful and is very much to do with science and to me this is the what often gets missed when you're talking about science is that behind almost every science policy question there is a human life at risk whether it's disease or climate change somebody is going to suffer an emotional consequence from science and that's why I never understand the sort of uh, the gap between politicians and science because it's a very emotional thing they ought to be able to talk about in that, in that way. Now tell me a little bit more about Science Debate as an organization. What made you decide to push for science in, and call it a science debate? Well, it all began uh, in early, in 2007 and I was watching all of the debates and many of them in those days, it's interesting they've, they've cut down on it a bit, were faith and values debates. And I thought if they can have debates on faith and values, the answers to which you know is going to be, yes, I believe in God, yes, he will inform my foreign policy, etc. I pray every night. You knew what that was. Why can't they also talk about reality? I mean, not that I'm saying that religion isn't very real to some people. It is. But I mean, there are actual sort of consequential real things. So I put together this organization with my friends, um, Sean Otto and Austin Dacey and um, Lawrence Krauss and Michael from USC and a bunch of other people, Cheryl Kirschenbaum, marine biologist, Michael Halpern. Um, and we wanted to get a science debate and we almost got it in 2008. We had Hillary and Obama and McCain who were all in the race at the time almost agreeing to a debate in Philadelphia at the Franklin Institute. And we had them nailed, it was two weeks in advance, and they canceled on us to do a debate at Messiah College on faith and values. So that was a bit of a blow. Um, but we kept on going. We got them to do um, answer 14 questions on science. When we released the questions on, on, when we released their answers, we reached 850 million people. Um, worldwide. Um, so it was a huge success on that level. Um, and, ha and we've done the same thing in the, in the 2012 and 2016. All the, can all the final candidates answered our questions on science. So. It was wonderful to see all four presidential candidates answer 20 questions in detail some more detail than others uh, in the 2016 election. Yeah. Um, now, if people want to read those questions and read what the candidates have to say about science, unfortunately, it doesn't look like they're going to be doing a science debate in the 2016 election, but they have answered the questions. So if we would like to read the candidates' positions on the 20 most critical issues in science, where can we go to read those? Well, you go to sciencedebate.org, the website, and you'll see a right in the middle of the screen, the candidates' answers. 
And then at the top right of the screen, you'll see a button called Donate. And we need your money. <laughs> so donate, join, um, sign the petition, which is you know, simply asking for candidates to involve themselves in a debate. And you'll see it all there. It's quite, f it's quite a fantastic website. One last question. What do you think about uh, events like this one? Do you think they actually do something impactful to put pressure on the candidates and people in public life to talk about science? Oh, absolutely. Because I think every time, every time you have something like this, you have a ripple effect. Everybody goes home and thinks about things that other people have said. And in the end, I mean, it's, to me, it's absolutely inevitable that there will be a science debate sooner or later. I mean, already our 20 questions are part of the political fabric of getting elected because you can't, after Donald Trump has answered 20 questions on science, what candidate is going to say, but I'm not going to? <laughs> it's impossible. We are now part of the institution of getting elected. Um, and eventually there just has to be. It's more important than economics. It's often more important than foreign policy. It's everything about the future of your life, the future of our kids, the future of the planet. The idea that you don't have a debate on science if you want to run for president is ludicrous. It's bizarre. You know, That's the way I look at it. Well, we're going to get back to the second panel at this science event at the uh, YouTube studios in New York. Well, thank you so much for making this possible, Matthew. Well, thank you, Jay, for making it wonderful. We want to give a special thanks to our partners, Science Debate, who were the whole reason we were able to do this uh, special panel in the first place. Also to the Union of Concerned Scientists, Research America, the Science and Education Policy Association, and Wow Cornell Medical. Thank you so much for making this amazing event happen. Thank you to YouTube Studios for being the host of PsyQ for two years. And thank you to everyone involved in the cast and crew.